these ordinary people are building brains. It takes a little bit of skill, a little bit of luck, and a lot of teamwork. As you build a brain, you're going to learn how environments, experiences, and genes act together to shape brain development. Ready? It's the brain architecture game. Before we start playing, let's learn some brain science. To help with that, we'll need a scientist. Our topic today is the brain. We often think of the brain as just one thing, but really, it's like a lot of little brains all inside one organ. Just like a house with many rooms, each room has a different function. Brain cells are the building material. What happens is that experiences you have cause brain cells to connect together, like a house that's getting wired up. Basic sensory abilities like vision and hearing are the first to get wired up. And these act like a foundation for other abilities to be built on. As you age, the right experiences build new rooms. You learn how to walk and talk, and eventually how to do more complex things like arithmetic and planning and reasoning. These last rooms are still getting wired up in your teens and beyond. And that's great news because it means that parents, teachers, coaches, and all of us who spend time with kids can influence the development of these abilities right into a person's 20s. But it's all built on the foundation that began in the earliest years. So what's going on inside the brain that causes certain abilities to develop in some people and not in others? This is where experiences really matter. Genes provide the basic instructions to tell cells to connect to each other, but it's experiences, like all that time spent on peekaboo, learning to read, or just playing together, that cause certain circuits to be wired and strengthened during development. Wiring that's used less does not become as strong, and it gets pruned away. So it's up to caregivers and communities to make sure young people have positive brain-building experiences at all ages of their development. Of course, not all kinds of experiences are helpful, really bad experiences that are intense, frequent, or prolonged, like violence, ongoing neglect, cause stress that's so serious it can have a toxic effect on brain development. A brain experiencing toxic stress will have weaker architecture and that can lead to a whole range of problems later in life. Sometimes we have experiences that could turn toxic for the brain or not, depending on who's around to give support. Imagine a tragedy like death of a parent. A child left to grieve without adult support will suffer severe stress that lasts a long time. But if caring adults work with the child to soothe the body's stress response and teach coping skills, the experience won't be toxic for the brain. When caregivers prevent severe stress experiences from turning toxic, scientists call it tolerable stress. So communities and caregivers are very important, whether they're actively encouraging healthy brain development or working to prevent toxic stress from harming the brain. These interventions are very important for the long-term health and well-being of both individuals and the community as a whole. That last point is what I want you to think about when you play the brain architecture game, because as you'll learn soon enough, brains don't build themselves. It's group work. So get all the help you can and go build some brains. Okay, newly educated brain experts, are you ready to play? Your goal in the brain architecture game is to build your brain as tall as possible. You want a strong brain too, so it won't collapse under the weight of life's stresses. To play the game, you'll need pipe cleaners, supports, they kind of look like straws, a die, weights, life experience cards, and a life journal. The game starts, as life does, with a roll of the dice. What's your genetic starting point? Roll the die and check your life journal. Then, build the corresponding base. Next, you need to find out the number of social supports you have at birth. Roll the die again and collect that number of supports to use later in the game. Mark the results of both rolls on your life journal.
Now that your brain is born, life happens. For each year, you'll draw three life experience cards. Their effect on your brain can be positive, toxic, or tolerable, which determines the materials you have to build with. Each time you draw a card, it's important to keep track of what type of experience it is in your life journal. How do life experiences affect brain architecture? If you draw a positive experience, you'll collect a pipe cleaner and a straw as building materials. Because positive experiences, like learning a new skill, are the building blocks of strong brain architecture. What happens when you draw a toxic stress experience card? It's bad news for your brain, because it weakens architecture. Whenever you draw a toxic stress experience, you get a pipe cleaner, but no straw. Sorry. If you draw a question mark card, you may or may not get a support. Add up your life experiences in the game so far. If you've had more positive than toxic experiences, take a straw with your pipe cleaner. If you've had a pileup of toxic stress, you probably aren't getting the caregiver support you need, so no straw for you. If it's a tie or if this is your first life experience card, roll the die. Even rolls mean positive. Odd rolls mean toxic. As you build your brain, keep in mind a few do's and don'ts. Do use all the materials you've collected in a year before moving on to the next year. Do attach pipe cleaners at the ends. Build closed structures at the end of each year. Don't leave open ends to tie up later. Okay, did you get all that? Positive experiences earn a pipe cleaner and straw. Toxic stress earns just a pipe cleaner. Tolerable experiences turn positive or toxic, depending on the balance of experiences in the game so far. Your brain saw some pretty remarkable changes from birth until the end of year five. From here, the pace of development slows and the rules change, just as they do in life. Starting in year six, you can't earn any additional straws. Your base is already built, but your brain is still developing. So now, a positive experience earns just a pipe cleaner and a toxic stress earns a weight. Attach each weight to the tallest point on your brain Tolerable stress turns positive or toxic, like before. The game ends when your brain finishes year eight, or collapses, or tips over, whichever comes first. Remember, the goal is to build the strongest, tallest brain you can. Work together, have fun, and once you've finished, talk with your group about what happened to your brain.